Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhinyak. In this new episode of the digital publishing series, I'm going to show you how to work with buttons and create interactivity in your InDesign CC documents. What I would like to create is a simple portfolio or slideshow, and we are going to show three different images and switching between them by using three different buttons. So we will start from scratch and create a new document. I'm going to choose Intent Digital Publishing and I have the orientation set to landscape and the page size set to iPad. And I'm going to click on OK. And uh, I am going to go to Bridge and select three photographs that I took and I'm going to drag and drop them into InDesign. I can click and drag and press right arrow twice and then I can paste them in and I can even hold down space just to make them a little bit bigger and something like that will work just fine and I have now the three photos pasted in and I just need to create the buttons for them but it's good to know that whenever you want to manipulate and uh, show and hide different images uh, with, with buttons, then the images themselves should be turned into buttons as well. So that's what I'm going to do. But let me just make these images bigger. I'm going to put them on top of each other and I'm going to make them bigger. So I just hold down Command and Shift together and I make the frames bigger something like that now let's just have a look at them i'm going to move them on the side put one here and just align them and put another one on the other side so we can see all of them and i would like to create the buttons below these images so they will be all placed in the center once we are ready with them but first of all we have to turn them into buttons as I said so for that I'm going to open the buttons and forms uh, panel and here while having the image selected I can click on convert to button option so now this became a button and let me just call this Venice because that's where I took this photo. I'm going to select the other image and just drag it in so you can see it. I turn that also into a button and I'm going to call this Dolomites. That's in, also in Italy, in the mountains. And I'm going to drag this one in and I'm going to turn this as well into a button and let's just call this Spain. That's it, so we have all the three buttons ready. I'm going to zoom out a bit and move these images on my pasteboard. So we have all three set up as buttons and we have the names on them. Now we can actually create uh, the navigation buttons. So for that I'm going to use the type tool and I'm going to create a frame and I just type in the same names. So I'm going to type in Venice and I will make the text bigger. That's it. Well, that's my first button. Then there will be another one. I'm going to type in Dolomites. Make a little bit more space for this. Yep. And then the third button and let me just type in Spain. So we have these three names and I'm going to double click on the corner points just to get rid of any unnecessary part of the text or text frame. And now I'm going to turn these as well into buttons. So again, I can either click on this icon here or I can choose button from the type that also turns it into a button. And you can tell whenever a frame or any object in your InDesign document is turned into an interactive element because you will see dash line around it. So this uh, frame here already turned into uh, the interactive element a button and that, that indicated that is indicated with the dash line but now I have to add an action uh, to this button and what I would like to add as an action is to show hide buttons and forms so I'm going to select that and it immediately tells me that what are the available uh, objects or uh, buttons that I can show or hide and because Venice is the only image that is available on the page that's why that's the only option here but as soon as I move any of these images closer and I go back to Venice let me just select it again now I can see Spain as well in the list 
So what I need to do is, first of all, let's just call this button Venice button, enter, and then do the same thing with the other uh, text frames. So I'm going to set this as well up as a button, and I'm going to call it Dolomite button, enter, and set the action for this also to show hide buttons and frames. Do the same thing with Spain once again. I'm going to choose a button and type in Spain button and choose the action as show hide buttons and forms. And by the way, while we are here in this list, you can see that we have quite a lot of actions we can assign to buttons in InDesign. And some of them are available for Swift files, which are mainly good for animations. And uh, some of them are available for PDF, interactive PDFs only, and some of them are available for both of them. So these on the top are available for both Swift and PDF. These are Swift only, and these are PDF only options or actions. So it's just good to know that, but the show hide buttons and forms action is actually available for both of these file exports. So now that we have everything set up, I need to zoom out a bit and just move the other image in as well. And I can even put them now on top of each other because it's not a problem at all. I can select all three of them and then I can just arrange them or align them. I can go to the window menu and choose object and layout align and then set align objects in the center and then also align it to the page and then align it to the center. So now everything is fine. Maybe these buttons can also be aligned a little bit. So I'm just going to go back to the same option. So um, object align and I want to equally space them out. So distribute the objects and distribute the horizontal centers. But now they are a little bit too far from each other because I have had the align to page option on. So I'm just going to set that to align to selection and then use it again. Now they are equally spaced out and I just move them a little bit further to the right. And maybe the images can go down a bit. Okay, now let's have a closer look at this. I'm going to press W just to see it without frames. And also I make sure that for these uh, image frames, I don't have any strokes added. So it will look like that. And uh, let's have a look at the action. So I'm going to select Venice and it already has an action. So I can decide what I would like to see whenever this uh, button is pressed. So. I would like to see Venice, so I'm going to set an eye icon for that. And I can set up a non-visibility or a hiding option or hiding action for the Spain image and the Dolomites image. I will do the same with uh, the Dolomites button. So I'm going to hide Venice, hide Spain, and I would like to see Dolomites. And then the same with Spain, I would like to see that, but don't see Venice and Dolomites. So the actions are set up properly and uh, we can already test this out by simply clicking on this icon here at the bottom of the buttons and forms panel, the preview spread. That will give us a Swift preview where we can click on these buttons and we can see how it works already. So that's already a very useful uh, way to work with um, images set up as buttons and also buttons set up for the actions to switch between them. But we can also create a bit more interactivity or make it visually more interesting by adding um, effects to these buttons here. So I would like to see a rollover effect. All I need to do is just simply click on rollover and that will add that state for the button. And when I want to edit the contents of this button, I just need to double click and then I can select the text and I can change the text color to red, for example. Now I can do the same thing with the uh, other button. Again, uh, go back to the buttons uh, option. So select the button, add rollover state, make sure that's selected and then double click, double click again and select and choose red, RGB red. We have RGB colors, by the way, that's also good to just notice that we have RGB color space because we chose the intent to be digital pub publishing. 
all these things are all uh, re interrelated in, in design so it's good to know what we are doing I select Spain add the rollover state and then double click and double click again select and add the red color okay now that we have everything set up let's have a look again with the uh, preview so I choose this icon here at the bottom preview spread and uh, we can resize this um, panel just so we can see a little bit more of this uh, whole interactive menu so we have the Venice Dolomites and Spain we can see that there is the rollover effect and when I click I can easily switch between them now what if I would like to have a description also showing up with the images we can also do that and the best way to do it is to include the description in the image buttons so in the image button elements like this one is the Spain if I double click on this that means I'm inside the button and if I use the type tool and I create something here I can type in uh, the name of the place it's uh, I took this photo in Guadalest it's a beautiful place in Spain um, maybe I just type in mountains and lake in uh, Guadalest I'm going to make this a little bit bigger something like that so now this description is added to the image and if I go back one step we can see that actually this is not part of the button yet the only way we can edit into the button is not just simply by double clicking on the uh, button image but we have to paste it into it so I need to go to edit and paste into now this will be part of the button and if I double click on the uh, button element I can move it around if I want to I can reposition it but when I double click outside it's all part of the button and if we want to test it once again let's just have a look at the preview and when we switch from Venice to Spain we will see that the text will also appear and when I go to Venice or Dolomites that description disappears and it will only appear for Spain so that's just another useful thing to know that you can combine several elements images text um, whatever you need into one button but make sure that you always use the paste into option or you can also use the layers panel where you can find the buttons and make sure that everything is grouped together and then it will stay inside the same button and of course if you want after this point you can always stylize the images or the background or add uh, paragraph styles to the font but all the actions are set up so from this point the interactivity is sorted you just need to deal with the images in the following episodes of the digital publishing series we will explore more options uh, with the buttons and we will use them for more complex actions I hope you found this tutorial useful and make sure you give the buttons a try. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Touch Plus.